Pip, Pip, Sally Ho, Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like these videos. Today we're in Barnet, or Chipping Barnet, and it's called Barnet from the Old English Burnet or something, meaning the clearing or the burning, because there used to be woods around here which all belonged to the Abbey of St Albans, and they burnt all these trees down, and then they made this clearing. That's why it's called Burnet. Um, or High Barnet, because apparently this is the highest point between London and York. Back in 1588, Queen Elizabeth I granted a royal charter for them to have this Barnet Fair, this year, which happened every year. And by the 19th century, the Barnet Fair became the biggest livestock market in the whole of England. But it's also known as Chipping Barnet, because in Old English, like in Cheapside in the city, it means the marketplace. like. Uh, like Chipping Norton, Chipping... Anything with Chipping in front of it means there used to be a market there. And uh, it became so famous, in fact, it uh, became Cockney rhyming slang for your hair, your barnet. Go get your, go get your barnet cut, your barnet fair, hair. Now, football supporters might recognise this uh, area down here because uh, from 1907 to about 2013, that's where the Mighty Bees used to play their football, Underhill Stadium. Barnet State, where Barnet Football Club used to play down there. They've now moved up to Edgeware. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner. Do you know in, in maybe it's because I'm a Londoner you can sort of put interjections, have a banana, and you know, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I love London sound, get off my sister, you know, all that. <laughs> <laughs> and so, well, a lot of people say, well, I sing when you, when, when he goes, I get a funny feeling inside of me, walking up and down Barnet High Street. I don't know why Barnet High Street, but anyway, this is Barnet High Street. That's what I sing. And over here is the Red Lion Pub, which was one of these 15th century coaching inns. I suppose if you were coming from London and sort of going up north, presumably to York or somewhere, you would stop here to change your horses. There were loads of these coaching inns actually around here. They boasted here having the strongest horses, of course, but there was lots of competition from the other, the other coaching inns. Yeah, they've rebuilt it. Actually, it was the Muir Brewery. Remember we talk about the, the beer flood in, in Tottenham oh, yes. Court Road? And yes. that, that, that happened at the Muir Brewery. Um, yeah, I was talking about it in my Peckham video. Um, and you can see on those kind of drain pipes, the Muir Brewery rebuilt it in the 1930s. But it was, in fact, here that Samuel Pepys claims to have had the best cheesecakes he had ever had in his whole life. I wonder if they still do cheesecakes. Cheeseburgers. So many pubs are haunted. Yet another one of these haunted pubs. I'm not going to go into detail of all the places. If you find a pub that isn't haunted, let me know. <laughs> yeah, so many pubs are called the Red Lion. Hello. <laughs> so many pubs are called the Red Lion because I read somewhere that um, after King James I came to the throne, because he was Scottish and he had a Red Lion as part of his crest, he demanded that all buildings of importance, including the pub, had a Red Lion outside them. So apparently that's how so many pubs became called the Red Lion. Because I think it's the most popular name for a pub in the whole of uh, England, actually. Is there like a top five? It must be. Eh? It's got to be the King's Head, the King's Dog and Duck. It's got to be a lot of Dog and Ducks. Next head, Greyhound. <laughs> yeah. The railway. My friend asked me a random question. She said, Julian, what is the name of a pub which has an other body part on it? I was like, well, she, she wanted to know. She, she said, it's a lot of King's Head. Right? <laughs> she said, do you get any other parts of bodies in yeah, pubs, King's names? Arms. Yeah, the arms. Yeah. I said, the arms. Hello. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah the, King's arms, King's... You don't get the King's legs. The dog bollocks. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. I have seen something like that. That was yeah. a Dirty dicks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Oh, I've got a lot of fans along here, haven't I? Got... And, uh, hello. <laughs> and I uh, can't get recognised. Um... You see this place here, Tudies? You wouldn't have thought it. It's a pity they're not open. But they were doing some, like, sort of taking down the, some of the partitions and stuff, and they found... Well, 14th century beams and stuff. And it, it was quite a lot of the structure remaining. I think this is possibly the oldest building in the whole of Le Barnet. <laughs> so it's like, it was really ancient things. And now, obviously, it's, they've, they've got, I don't know, builders in there. Oh, they're preserving it. Not yeah, yeah it I think they're not trying to... Not make a way for an Ikea kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This one, the old Mitre Inn, 
It's not ye old mitre, it's the old mitre. This is also a really old pub, I mean, obviously it's been rebuilt, but there's been a pub here since the 15th century. And um, this is where General Monk stayed, who helped restore King Charles II to the throne. 1659-ish, he stayed in here whilst uh, 5,000 of, of his troops waited on Finchley Common. And then they marched down to London and restored King Charles II to the throne. These lovely old Tudor buildings you get in Barnet. In 1573, it was um, Queen Elizabeth I granted a charter for one common grammar school in or near the town of Barnet, which shall be called the Free Grammar School of Queen Elizabeth. Actually, it continued until 1932, so they moved it. I suppose that must be probably a part of the college now, I don't know. But uh, anyway, so it's nice, isn't it? I think they rebuilt a bit of it. But um, anyway, Queen Elizabeth I passed through here in 1558 on her way to Charter House from Hatfield Palace. That's where she actually was staying before she was made Queen. And then she was informed, hey, your sister's died, you better go down to London to go and become Queen and uh, go to the Tower of London, go and prepare. And she was up at Hatfield Palace or whatever. And she said, no bloody way, I'm not, going down to, I'm not going down to the Tower of London. That's where people get their heads chopped off. So she went down to Charter House, stayed there for her first day as Queen. Anyway, let's go this way. This is John the Baptist Church, Barnet. Is it Barnet Church? They just call it Barnet Church. Actually, and it was just around this little area here in 1555, it was called the Squeeze, this little bit around here, that William Hale was burnt at the stake. He's Barnet's only uh, martyr. He was burnt at the stake by, do you remember Bishop Bonner? when we went down to Fulham Palace. You know, we were talking about the yes. bloody Bishop Bonner. He used, to, he used to burn a lot of people at the stake. He was under, under the reign of uh, Bloody Mary. Anyway, he was burnt somewhere around here. Poor fella. It's so beautiful. It's like being in the countryside around here. And just around the back of this courthouse, there's a lovely garden, so you can really take a beautiful stroll. I have nothing to say about it. I just, uh, I just think it's worth <laughs> taking a turn around the garden. Is that you, Simon? We're just here on Wood Street, and I'm just walking along here, and you can see all these flags and stuff on all the lampposts. Oh, yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. They're all the sort of uh, coat of arms, I suppose, of the family crests of all these noble families that fought in the famous Battle of Barnet, one of the most important battles in the uh, War of the Roses. Now, we'll talk about the Battle of Barnet a bit later on. Um, if you want to know more about the Battle of Barnet and all sorts of other stuff uh, to do with the area, you can head to the museum over the Barnet Museum. I'm going to quickly run across in front of this bus. Don't you do it. We're open on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday afternoons, Saturdays and Sundays uh, afternoons, 2.30 to 4.30. What is amazing is that they've got things in here that I remember in my house. I mean, look at that over there, look at that hoover. My dad had a hoover like that. We used to hoover with that. That's, uh, and now it's in a museum and, by the way, we had one of these. For, well, after my dad used to make polpatoni, which is like a big meatball after we had Sunday roasts costumes, toys, dolls, and we've got a room done out as a Vicwardian salon. I really love these little museums. I actually think they're much better than the big ones, to be honest. I find you get these really interesting little knickknacks in these places, and a lot of stuff which I recognise from my own childhood, which is a bit depressing. Pubs, which are a big part of Barnet. The medieval history, including the Battle of Barnet, which was fought 551 years ago. World War I, World War II, a bit about the football club, Barnet FC. Barnet Football Club. The best they did was in 1946, they won the FA Amateur Cup final at Stamford Bridge. Uh, that's a hell of a ball, isn't it? It was one of those medicine balls. Yeah. Was it? They probably, uh, no, it was, give it was, your brain damage if you head so it. Jimmy Greaves. Oh, what? Wait a minute. Didn't know Jimmy Greaves play played for at the Barnet? End, at, the, at, the end of his, at the end of his career. Rest his soul. Barnet played um, what was Ghana, the Gold Coast tour, touring team. And the Gold Coast team beat Barnet 4-3, but they were playing in bare feet. Oh, man. I have a personal obsession with Edward VIII memorabilia. And what have we over here? A coronation mug for Edward VIII. All these things which, uh, for a coronation, they never happened. And uh, the date of the coronation was actually, in the end, the date that his brother, George, uh, George VI, got, uh, got crowned. <laughs> 
This is where there used to be a, a, one of my favourite post boxes. I'm obsessed with these King Edward VIII post boxes. It's quite rare because King Edward VIII, as we saw in the museum, he, he wasn't even crowned. He was only on the he was only king for a very short time before abdicating. And there was one of these ones here, and it was um, I think it was recessed into the wall. It was one of the ones that was in the wall. And then uh, some foolish idiot crashed into it. The neighbours are up in arms because they, they all want it back. But uh, the most annoying part of it is that we know the person who did it, don't we? Because it was it was his brother. Are you joking? Yeah, it was, he, he was the one who had the accident. Now there's one fewer of these King Edward VIII post boxes. To be fair, they had already replaced the door of it with uh, one of the modern Queen Elizabeth II ones. So perhaps I should go easy on him. But uh, yeah, it just looks a bit out of place, that. Yeah, it does. A little doesn't reminder it? Yeah. of our yeah. stupid friend. Silly man. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite. We've got these lovely buildings. There's quite a lot of these along this road, actually. This is uh, alms houses, A-L-M-S. I'm always talking about alms houses. These are the Ravenscroft alms houses, originally built in 1672 by uh, James Ravenscroft. You, you can actually see his tomb over in the Barnet Church just there we, where we were a minute ago. It might be the tomb that he built for his dad, actually. I don't know. They always seem to look the same. Have you noticed? Um, a lot of these uh, alms houses were people who had fallen on hard times, in this case, uh, widows. So these ones were built for six widows who may not be addicted to witch witchcraft, apparently. Okay. <laughs> who may, may not be. May not be addicted to witchcraft, who knows? But uh, may not be. perhaps most uh, widows were addicted to witchcraft. Anyway, now they're still kind of charity homes, possibly for elderly ladies. No wizards or witches last I checked. For some reason they always seem to be built in that little kind of that same way. Some more, yet more of these alms houses. These six alms houses were the gift of Mr. John Garrett, citizen and something, merchant tailor of London, and were erected in the year 1731. Is that what it says? Do you want to see the whale bones, Simon? Do you like a. I'm always, do, do, I'm always, I'm always up for whale it's a, bones. It's a bit watching. of a walk. It's a bit of a walk down this road, yeah. but it's, it's, it's kind of cool. Okay, we'll go down there, then we'll have to come all the way back. It's a lovely walk through here. Now, in a minute, we're going to go up uh, Union Street, actually, down there. But I, I just wanted to point out that, 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 that it was called Union Street because the Union Workhouse used to be over here, just where the Barnet Hospital is. Because the, the road forks into two here, and down the left fork is Barnet Hospital. Some people claim that that's the one that inspired the workhouse in Oliver Twist. But I thought it was the one down in Cleveland Street. So that's, the, I'm stick, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. But uh, if you go all the way down here to the bottom, there used to be this physic well. They used to have these sort of wells back in the old days with the Chalabit wells, they were called. Samuel Pepys went to this uh, Chalabit well quite frequently, and, and, and uh, afterwards he went to the, the Red Lion. That's where he had his uh, cheesecake. He, he said, uh, went to Barnet, half a mile off, and there I drank three glasses and went and walked and came back and drank two more. The woman would have had me drunk three more, but I could not, my belly being full. But this wrought me very well, and so we rode home, and my waters working at least seven or eight times upon the road, which pleased me well. No wonder he went to the toilet so many times, because she forced him to drink so many glasses. OK, hold on to the rail on the right. Right home. Uh, when you get to the bottom, watch your head on the on the. the <laughs> yeah, yeah. And turn sharp right at the bottom. It's very important to watch my head. And to turn yeah. sharp right until you're in the middle. Oh, uh, oh right. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's right. The problem is you could easily trip and just end up in the well. Which one of us has? Oh, there goes my hat. Well, there it is. So there it is. What are you telling me then that um, Samuel Pepys came yeah. and actually drank that water? It was very popular at the time. I don't know what London water was like. It doesn't look a lot. These old worlds are quite rare. Most have changed over the years. They've evolved into something else. It may even be unique in the country. I don't know. It's quite rare anyway. Uh, the bricks, people tell me, who know about these things, are Tudor. They're the, the small bricks. So that's, that's another way of dating this. Uh, it was forgotten about for years and uh, rediscovered in the 1920s by I think a horse fell on a hole or something. <laughs> <laughs> so they decided to reinvestigate. So, yeah, so they were even sold us in London. You could apparently buy Barnet water on the Strand and uh, all the pubs around here would sell it. I think the uh, medieval diet was a bit uh, lacking. It was a bit was too much, too much uh, meat and, and alcohol and uh, no vegetables. So the, the, the digestion suffered.
So this helped them go a that bit. It certainly did. <laughs> right. Anyway, now that's if you take the left fork, but we're taking the right fork. Do you want to see a bone erection, Simon? I'd love to. I'd love to see a bone erection. Let's get his head down here. <laughs> No, it's an excellent little thing, but it's a bit of a walk down this road. You wouldn't know it. These are the jaw bones of a whale. Look at that. They're covered in moss and stuff, but well, it's called Whalebone Park, believe it or not, and leading to a sort of big house down there, which is a private road. I don't want to go down there, but it's called the, the Whale Bones. These are actually from 1939, but there were, there were already whale bones here before that. I think they got a bit corroded and they had to be replaced, because look, you can see it is kind of peeling off a bit. They, they probably could do with a, a new set of whale bones. It gives you an idea how big a whale is. I mean, these are jaw bones of the whale. This is rather nice. Look, the Leather Sellers Arms Houses. Leather Sellers were the worshipful company of Leather Sellers, I suppose. And the Leather Sellers uh, had close connections with the livestock market, the Barnet Fair, because they used to sell livestock and horses and all sorts there. Um, I don't know who lives in here now, these days. Presumably elderly people. This little pocket here, just outside Ravenscroft Park, kind of evokes the 19th century for me. I've like, got those lovely drinking fountain cattle trough association trough there. Oh, yes. Earn yes. yourself yes. points yes. for spotting one of those. And uh, it looks like a quite a nice pub, that. One of so I'm always trying to eye up a pub for our final drink of the video. Ah, you see Union Street I was mentioning earlier on. That's the reason this is called Union Street, it's because it led down to the um, wow. Union Workhouse that I was talking about earlier. Wow. Do with a lick of paint, that. Yes, but this leads to Stapleton Road, where we're heading. Remember, hold them and hold them and hold them and remember, hold them and thy time is spent. Remember, hold them and how thou came soon me then and I did walk. This is like the memorial to mark the place where the Battle of Barnet took place, because Battle of Barnet was one of the most important battles of the Wars of the Roses. Here was fought the famous battle between Edward IV and the Earl of Warwick, April the 14th, anno 1471, in which the Earl was defeated and slain. So it was the House of York who had Edward IV versus the House of Lancaster, led by Richard Neville, the Earl of Warwick. And he was trying to rescue his mate, King Henry VI, who had been taken hostage. Also present on Edward's side was Richard, Duke of Gloucester. And Richard, Duke of Gloucester, later on, went on to become King Richard III, the one they found in the car park. So at this battle, you actually had three kings of England. Here was Edward IV, Henry VI, and Richard III, all at this battle. In fact, they reenact this Battle of Barnet every year. They have a lovely festival, which I went to. Found some clothing. <laughs> I have to say, you do look really hilarious in that. What do you mean? Just because I haven't got the right trousers. <laughs> you think it's becoming? You look really weird. Can I use these uh, songs in my in my videos? Of course you can. Yes, Master, because there are versions, but obviously the composers are very, 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 very dead. <laughs> the earliest the earliest music that we play is probably from around about the mid 13th century and that's from a manuscript called the Canticus to Santa Maria and uh, that's a collection of 400 tunes to the Virgin Mary and every tenth tune has got a lovely little illuminated manuscript with it which shows you what people were wearing and gives you an idea of some of the instruments people were playing as well. Martin said to his man, Martin said to his man, Who's the fool now? Martin said to his man, Pass him the cup and I the cup. Oh, thou hast well drunk a man, who's a fool now? Thou hast well drunk a man, who's a fool now? It's a guitar from around about 1535, not that particular one. Oh, I thought it might just have another name. No, you? it's called a guitar master. <laughs> no, no, it is. It's, uh, it was one of, the, one of the earliest known instruments to be called a guitar. So that instrument is something that Henry VIII would have heard. He was on the throne in 1535. He also liked recorders. He had a good collection of recorders. And he also liked crumb horns. 
Anyway, on the morning of the battle, there was a terrible mistake in identity and the Lancastrians, because of the mist, the heavy fog that day, they ended up sort of attacking their own troops uh, to cries of treachery. And Richard Neville, the kingmaker, was killed. So King Edward IV remained king until 1483, when King Richard III took over. You see to the left of the bench there, I just spotted this. Don't you reckon that's too thick to be a lamppost? That's too thick to be a lamppost. Let's check to see what it is. How exciting. I wasn't expecting this. It looks like they've converted it. Yes. I bet you they've converted that yeah. from a stink pipe into a lamppost. Sneaky. Don't you think? Because that looks, that's, that, don't you think? Look at the way that's just, that doesn't go with that. And that has been clamped on as an afterthought. It doesn't even fit on properly. Yeah. I wouldn't be at all surprised if that was a stink pipe. There's a little plaque up here. This is indicating, that's a picture of um, Dr. David Livingstone, I presume. In 1858, he wrote his famous book here, Missionary Travels and Researches in South Africa. Look at that, yeah, missionary and explorer lived here in the year 1857. And he lived right next door to um, Fanny Trollope. <laughs> what a name. Not only is she a Trollope, she's a Fanny too. She was the mother of Anthony Trollope, who was the writer, famous for introducing post boxes into Britain, like the ones we were talking about. He was, yeah, he worked for the post office, Anthony Trollope. But anyway, Fanny Trollope. This is from her book, um, Domestic Manners of the Americans, which was quite a bestseller at the time. She's not that nice about that. She's some sort of things she says, I very seldom during my whole stay in the country, heard a sentence elegantly turned and correctly pronounced from the lips of an American. It is impossible for any mind of common honesty not to be revolted by the contradictions in their principles and practice. I don't think she liked America much. <laughs> anyway, good. Yet more of these almshouses. And look, again, they've got these cute little hobbit doors as well. They're always looking the same, these things. These ones are Wilbraham's almshouses. I'm not going to go on about them. There's a lot of them around here. All hail to the days that merit more praise than all the rest of the year. And welcome the nights that double delights as well for the poor as the peer. This is the Church of St Mary the Virgin Monk and Hadley, whatever that means. It built in 1494. And this appears in one of the JMW Turner's paintings from 1790s. I like Turner, he's quite good. Look at on the roof there, you can see they've got a beacon. So this is this beacon was actually lit when the Spanish Armada invaded in 1588. It was it was lit to warn people that Armada are coming. They lit it quite recently, probably as a, as a commemoration of this famous Battle of Barnet, which we've been talking about. Look at this. Just imagine if you lived here. This terrific little kind of gate going up. It's like living in the countryside. It's like a kind of a real hobbit's home, that. But anyway, look, above the door here is something pretty cool here. So in the 1450s, they started to use Arabic numbers. You know the numbers that we use now? Um, you know, normal integers, one, two, three, four, five, seven. That's, those are actually Arabic numbers, um, which before then we used Roman numerals. You know, one, 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 but above the door there, look, it's one of the first instances of the Arabic numbers being used. I mean, they don't use it anymore. It was one of the early incarnations of it. So they've still got those sort of half loops. It looks like half a figure eight, because that, that was four. It's the date that it was rebuilt in 1494. Yeah, it's one four, the funny little kind of half eight thing, and then a nine, and then another half eight. I think that's kind of cool. It's the third video in a row in which I've been wandering around in graveyards. But yeah, I think it's this one. Yeah, you can't see it very well. But they, they've actually got a skull and crossbone. I don't know if you can see, make out the skull oh, and yes, crossbone you could just, here. Yeah. They say that it's a pirate's grave, Walter Walmsley. And, and if you walk around it three times, and then if you tap on it, then you get three taps in return. I'm too scared. I don't want to. Do you want to do it? See, I bet you don't want to do it either. I don't mind doing it. Two. Yeah, three. And then just give it a, a tap. Just you have to just tap once. He's supposed to tap. He's supposed to kind of. I have to 
say, there are a lot of post boxes here, aren't there? In <laughs> That's a cute one. Look at this. Yeah, maybe they're trying to make up for the fact that um, that they smashed down that other one. Yeah, but there's, <laughs> so, an uh, there's another one right over there. Look. Oh yeah, yeah. Very greedy. This is supposed to be the place where Oliver Twist meets the Artful Dodger in, in, in Oliver Twist. Early on the seventh morning, after he had left his native place, Oliver limped slowly into the little town of Barnet as he sat with bleeding feet and covered with dust upon a doorstep. So Oliver Twist was sitting on this doorstep here. Hello. And there he sat. He had been crouching on the step for some time, wondering at the great number of public houses. Every other house in Barnet was a tavern, large or small. When he was roused by observing that a boy was now surveying him most earnestly from the opposite side of the way. Upon this, the boy crossed over and walking close up to Oliver said, Hello, my covey. What's the rare? Then he took him to the adjacent chandler's shop where he purchased a sufficiency of ready-dressed ham and half-quartern loaf. <laughs> which is now Snappy Snaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a bit far for the artful dodger. What, what was he doing here? That is a good point because it, it, the, Fagin lives with the artful dodger in Saffron Hill in Farringdon. It's quite a long way. He wouldn't just be hanging out here and then going all the way back down to, to Farringdon, yeah, surely? Yeah. It's not, it's not a casual walk, is it, up to the... Well, you've not read the book, have you, Julian, so... Really... No, I haven't actually, has <laughs> But I, I've, seen, I've seen the musical. I've seen the film. Uh, <laughs> Reviewing the situation. Cheers, Simon. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the videos. And if you want to know more about me, you can go over to my website, which is julesguides.com, or follow me on Instagram, or leave a donation. Or um, don't forget to come to Barnet. See you next time. Cheers.